God doesn't warn us to scare us, but to prepare us, it starts out. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. That, that's that unrighteous deception. Because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should, be, should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So what is the strong delusion, the great lie? Number one, Pastor Troy is talking about what's called a false religion. Now, this is where, like, I'm, I personally have some uh, Catholic brothers and sisters that I know to be saved. So I just want to put a, I want to put a quick little, like, insertion point here. I mean, I've seen some born-again, spirit-filled Catholics. Amen? I've seen them with my own eyes. I've, I've walked with them. I have high respect for them. Now, I don't know a lot about the Pope. I've seen a bunch of stuff that make him that makes him seem like a like a monster, but I also know how how easy it is to kind of twist stuff and take stuff out of perspective, you know, take, take stuff out of context and and, and, sh- and you know have a certain perspective that skews things. So I just you know not a hill that I would personally die on. You know I, I I'm all about unity in the body of Christ, and if somebody out there trusts in Jesus Christ for salvation, that's my brother or sister. Okay. Um, but I do want to just read this because I again I found it I found it interesting. The video has a lot more to say about this in, in terms of pictures and actual actual um, images. But what he's seeing is a false religion. You'll see, um, you know, he he actually had a video a couple weeks ago that talked about this. And so I don't think there's a link here. There's not. Um, but what you see there is, you know, I, they call it Chrislam, which is like. Judaism, the Catholic Church, and um, Islam coming together, and they're starting to, to talk along the lines of unity, uh, but unity amongst uh, those faith systems, it just it, it does rub me a little the wrong way, right? How can, how can two walk together unless they agree? And Jesus Christ is the only way, right? Jesus Christ is the only way. Now, we love the Jewish people. We honor... We love all people, right? We honor the Jewish people as God's covenant people, Israel. We pray that they would receive Messiah, Yeshua. That, that's our prayer for the, for the Jewish people, that they would come to trust in Yeshua. We are, as Christians, especially a Gentile believer, grafted into the original olive tree. So there's a lot of honor there. But we still hold without shame, without, without fear, or without you know, um, intimidation, we hold the truth that Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the, truth, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by him. And so it seems like the Pope's kind of um, moving in a way that suggests either he doesn't believe that or he, his, his, his um, version of... Um, sharing the gospel is coming away from orthodoxy. The traditional understanding of the gospel is you preach the gospel and it's the foolishness of preaching that hits the heart of a person and gives and revelation comes via this 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 crazy thing called preaching. And it seems like he's advocating for more or less like no, just just live a kind life and then when someone asks you, then you can share. Instead of and he, and, he, and he seems like he's moving pretty strongly against this idea of actually trying to convert people and proselytizing. Anyway, I haven't done a whole lot of research on him. Again, just take that with a grain of salt. Not anti-pope per se, but I know a lot of re- really trustworthy people that are, and uh, and then I know people that are that are super Catholic that I love very much, and they would say you know a lot of this stuff is taken out of context. So just if you know do your own research there. But there is some interesting stuff happening around the world right now. Where do we find aliens in Scripture? Now, let's. This is where th- I think uh, the uh, the real value from this interview came. So, Revelation sixteen verses thirteen and fourteen. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. And then we have in parentheses China. Now, um, you know, some of this is obviously not in the Bible, right? So, this uh, just so you know, this parentheses is added as like. 
and as the um, writer's thoughts, okay? Out of the mouth of the beast, antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, false prophet slash pope. Again, that's not written in the scripture, just say, <laughs> I mean, we all know that, but just... For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. As it was in the days of Noah, so this is a this is something Jesus says, look, at the end of the world, it's going to be like the days of Noah. Well, what is that, um, you know, what are our takeaways there? Now, again, I'm, just, I'm kind of just reading Pastor Troy's stuff here, but I might add a few of my own notes here as well. Lackadaisical attitude of humanity despite the destruction looming in the future. Buying and selling, going on, business as usual, nothing to see here, everything's normal, but oh yeah, remember, it's about to start raining, right? So this is the days of Noah. It's like, it's like they didn't see it coming, and they were just living, you know, as if everything was okay. But also you have wickedness. Extreme wickedness was covering the earth. And then lastly, and this is this is the point that I thought was, um, you know, this, this is something that I think is being restored very strongly because our Western world has sort of, you know, the, uh, the Western mind sort of rejects the supernatural at, as, as a default. You know, intellectualism, whatever you want to call, uh, what I would say a very weak um component of the West, it, it sort of denies the supernatural. It's, it, it presupposes naturalism. Even within Christianity, you have a lot of denominations, obviously, that don't believe in the power of God, that, that, that are cessationists, that believe, you know, that stuff's, you know, not, not real. Um, but they also treat the, the dark side as well, sort of like, as ah, you know, it's not really real. And even if they, even if they have a, a theology for it, it doesn't actually bear out in their, in their life. Um, but I found this to be really helpful because if you if you if you're a first century Jew, if you have the mind of Christ like Jesus, this was sort of commonplace. You know, in, in fact, remember when Peter's in jail and the angel breaks him out of jail? Well, <laughs> he goes back to the house and they're like, you know, somebody somebody runs and says, Hey, Peter's here. And they're like, Ah, it can't be Peter. It must just be his angel. It was like so normal for them that the first, the early church it was so normal for them to interact with these heavenly beings. You know, think Sodom and Gomorrah. Th- think about think about all the Old Testament encounters with angels and the angelic. How normal it was. And so we're we're sort of removed from that worldview, but we're supposed to have a biblical worldview. And so we need to actually uh, repent. We need to change our mind and come back into alignment with the Bible and let the Bible form our worldview. So this third point is really interesting. It's the hybridization of humanity during the days of Noah. This is where the sons of God, fallen angels presumably, were were sleeping with... So here it is right here. In fact, we'll... Uh, I think he's going to talk about it, so I won't go too far ahead of me. So Genesis 6, 9 says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Well, that perfect in his generation, some, some translations don't know what to make about that. They just say he's he, you know, righteous, you know, a perfect in righteousness, but it's actually about his genealogy. It's about his bloodline. And we know this, you know, and we, we actually see it on the earth right now, again, happening, but the enemy's plan from the beginning was to... To, 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 to destroy the image of God on the earth, which was mankind. And now he has several ways. I mean, just straight up murder. If you think Cain and Abel, that's one way to do it, is just kill mankind, right? Steal, kill, and destroy. But another way to do it is to pollute or distort, to corrupt the bloodline. This was happening. This is why the flood happened. Is it, 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 was, it had gotten so corrupt. People were sleeping with angels. This is why, if you remember the story of Lot, you know, those angels... That were inside. I mean, the, the the town wanted to sleep with them because they it was such a wicked civilization. They believed through through intercourse with angels, you 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 received power, which wasn't necessarily false, right? You had the Nephilim, you had these giants in the land, which basically the daughters of man were sleeping with with these angelic beings. These they're created by God, but they're they're not they're not just your your um your typical angels. They're 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 something else. And it's creating what God is called, refers to as an abomination. And, and in fact, it's so wicked, it leads to the flood of Noah. 
So Noah and his sons and daughters-in-law were likely the only genetically pure people at the time of the flood. That's just, you know, again, that's not in the Bible, but that's, that's a pretty safe assumption. Genesis 6, 1 through 4, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, there it is right there, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Okay, the Hebrew word used in verse 4 for giants is Nephilim, which literally means fallen ones. Sons of God, watchers. So these are just some notes, but I think they're, it's pretty cool. We'll read them together. Sons of God, watchers, 72 angels, possibly more, put in charge of stewarding nations to help mankind. Now that 72, remember that 72 because you're going to see um, Jesus have the 70, and some, some manuscripts have 72, that he sends out, which is, which is an interesting um, juxtaposition there. Possibly more, put in charge of stewarding nations to help mankind. Principalities. Think about the prince of Persia that Daniel's herald angel had to fight for 21 days to get the interpretation of his dream to Daniel chapter 10, in Daniel chapter 10. So again, there, there, there's different created beings. And again, I'm still a student in this. I find it very interesting. But when you start to think about what aliens are, this sheds some light on what's happening. Jude 1 through 6, And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling... These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. A little side note here. Mormons believe Psalm, Psalms 82 points to a council of gods, and Elohim is just one of these gods. Not true. In this psalm, big G God is talking to the small G gods, the watchers who are supposed to help guide the nations and humanity. Now, there's quite a bit of... Um, problems with Mormonism, but one of them, if you didn't know, is that Elohim, who we would call, you know, God, is not the most high. Might go by the most high, but in reality, he's he was a man just like us, according to Mormon theology. He was a man just like us who through gospel law made it to be a God. And and we have the same fate if we if we obey the law. But that obviously means he's created. He had, he had a God before him. And it, there's a lot of scriptures that, that obviously destroy that theology. So Joseph Smith either just wasn't, which in my opinion, he just, you know, obviously deceived probably by an angel. Right? But Paul says, hey, even if an angel comes and preaches a different gospel, let him be accursed. Where the cults fall apart always is on the gospel of grace. They just can't, they can't preach the gospel of grace. They have, to, they have to break away from Jesus getting all the glory. That's, that's the problem with the cults. And also the cults, you can know a cult by how they treat you if you try to leave. You know, if, you, if you're at the House of Joy Church here in Ada and you try to leave, we'll say, God bless you. That's awesome. We, you know, we love you. <laughs> like, be blessed. Try to leave the Mormon church. You're, you know, they're going to they're gonna make sure you know you're going to hell. The only person that has no hope according to Mormon theology, is a Mormon that, that leaves. So you can always tell the cults by a, a certain things. One is, one is that kind of extreme, um, you know, uh, hold on your soul. The other is they depart from the gospel. And that's the main thing. You know, with Mormonism, it's, it's, you know, you can be, by grace, you'll be saved after all you can do. Well, that flies in the face of grace. It's, it's, it's literally the opposite. It's a, it's a fraud. How, how do you know all you can do? You can never have eternal security with that. You can never rest. You can never enter his peace. You're, you're, you're not actually justified by faith. Therefore, you can't have peace with God. Anyway, I wasn't going to teach on this, but just uh, this is another one of those places where they get it wrong. They see, they see this uh, council as God, you know, Elohim being just one of these gods. But no, you have actual God talking to these small g gods which are these, you know, we're, we're calling them here the Watchers, and they were supposed to help guide the nations and humanity. Okay, so again, these are created beings. Psalm 82, a plea for justice is what it says. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partia partiality to the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Now you see, 
the difference here, right? Big G God, little G gods, right? That that that's the whole that's that's the difference. Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said, You are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. So he's talking to these created beings that are not human. This is the main takeaway. They're not human. Okay? And again, you, you, there's there's different uh, levels, and I'm still learning this, so feel free. Don't, don't feel like this is, again, there's not going to be a test to enter heaven where you got to get all this right. But I just want you to understand there there is a bit of complexity when it comes to these angelic heavenly beings. They had different roles. Again, there's the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Lucifer. Lucifer became Satan, which is, again, uh, there is a really good teaching actually from Andrew uh, Womack about that, which totally enlightened me. You know, I, I never I never understood the difference, but if you want to check that out, it's actually really helpful. Uh, now, we're not necessarily endorsing the Book of Enoch here, but I do want you to see, um, and, and this is Brian talks about this in, in the video, the Book of Enoch helps us sort of color some of the, the backdrops because it talks about a lot of this stuff in detail. Now, if you've read the Book of Enoch, I've read I've read quite a bit of it. If you've read the Apocrypha, you'll notice that a lot, and, and some of this is quoted in Scripture, by the way, so it's validated. So it's not just like we're the only ones referencing it. You know, you have the actual New Testament Bible writers referencing the content from these from these books. So again, it doesn't necessarily establish them as Scripture. But it does say that there's some credibility. There's, there's some stuff in here that's worth checking out, okay? Again, I don't think you have to go home and read the book of Enoch in, it, you know, in order to like live a successful, victorious Christian life. We're not making that kind of claim. In fact, like I said in the beginning, this stuff probably won't help you in your Christian walk all that much at all because you won't be here for most of this stuff. This video is more in the, in the, uh, in the off chance that the Antichrist doesn't completely cleanse the internet of Christian videos, then this will be a breadcrumb from, for somebody who's in the Great Tribulation for them to, to help them understand what's happening. Obviously, if they have a Bible, uh, they can they can read about in the Scripture as well. But you know, the Lord has sent teachers, pastors, right, evangelists, prophets, and apostles to help people. And I know, like, it's helped me a lot to have teachers understand some of this stuff. I mean, again, Troy Brewer, if you guys are just joining, we're reading Troy Brewer's article that was released last week about uh, about this stuff. The book of Enoch has great information on watchers, was part of King James, so it was originally part of the Bible. Of course, the um, the Catholic, uh, you know, we have, which I found, I find this interesting, again, not, um, not saying I agree, but just I find it interesting that the Protestant Bible has 66 books. Kind of a strange number to land on, right? <laughs> you know, if you're a Christian, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna stray away from 66. Add one more six, and we're in trouble, right? But the Catholic book, Bible has 73 books, which is a pretty you know perfect completion. That's what that means, perfect completion. So there is some there is some like at least I think interesting content in some of these letters. I don't read them all the time. They're not like super mission critical. I basically, if you stick to the epistles and the New Testament, man, especially if you're a Christian at this time, you'll get so much life out of those. And the whole Bible is profitable for you. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you do, you do especially as we near the end, you do need to kind of figure out who you are and what you need and, and gobble it up aggressively. So it was mysteriously taken out in the 1800s. That's just a side note saying, hey, maybe the book of Enoch's worth looking at. That's all. I'm just going to let Brian speak for himself here. And then uh, let's, let's just take a look at what some of the book of Enoch says. So this is 2 Enoch 18, 7. Enoch in fifth heaven under the earth, a prison for the watchers. And those men answered me. These are the Grigori watchers who turned aside from the Lord. 200 myriads together with their princes, set Satanale. And similar to them are those who went down as prisoners to their train, in their train, who are in the second heaven, imprisoned in great darkness. And three of them, watchers, descended to the earth from the Lord's throne onto the place, Ermon, 
And they broke the promise on the shoulder of Mount Ermon. And they saw the daughters of men, how beautiful they were, and they took wives for themselves, and the earth was defiled by their deeds, who, in the entire time of this age, acted lawlessly and practiced misc- miscegenation and gave birth, which is a fancy word basically that says they slept with a different breed, a different race, a different created order, and gave birth to giants and great monsters and great enmity. And that is why God has judged them with a great judgment. And they mourn their brothers, and they will be out, and they will be outraged on the great day of the Lord. Now, again, that's talking about the flood of Noah. It just it just colors it. It gives us a little more information. If you just stick to your you know Protestant Bible, it um it does talk about this, but it kind of just leaves it a little mysterious there. You know, you're just kind of like what you know, and that again, that's interbreeding that word. Where do we find giants in the Bible? Again. Okay, these are the references. Without things like the Book of Enoch, you you would be left with some question marks. Is all that this uh you know this brother Brian is saying, which I agree with him. It helps us kind of understand. Numbers thirteen thirty three. There there we saw giants. The descent the the descendants of Enoch came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. God commands Joshua to wipe out even women, children, and animals in Canaan. Okay, so why? It's the bloodline. It's the it's the it's the tainted DNA. It was wicked. It was against it, it was corrupt. This this helps you so much. You know, when I was an early Christian, I did not know how to answer someone that says, Why did God have like the entire nation destroyed? This entire people group wiped out, women and children. You know, and I would you get caught with some of those questions in apologetics and you're like, uh he had a good reason, which is which is true. It's true if God did it. Remember, God is the is the standard of justice. So if he did it, he 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 must it must have been good. By definition, everything he does is good and just and righteous and true. So that is an okay answer, but this actually helps you quite a bit understand what was going on. The bloodline had been corrupt. Well, it wasn't even a human, it was an abomination. He was cleansing the earth of that abomination. But of the cities of these people, peoples, which, and this is Deuteronomy 20, which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance, you shall let nothing that breathes remain alive, even animals, but you shall utterly destroy them, the Hittite and the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite, just as the Lord your God has commanded you, lest they teach you to do according to all their abominations which they have done for their, for their gods, and you sin against the Lord your God. Okay, so that, there it is. Giants in the Bible. Numbers 13, Deuteronomy 1, 2, 9, Joshua 11, 4, 15. These are some references if you want to go check them out. Judges 1, verse 20, Anak, sons of Anak and Anakin, giants, Nephilim. Deuteronomy 3, 13, Bashan is the land of giants. Deuteronomy 3, 11, king of Og of, of Bashan's bed was nine cubits by four cubits, 13 by six feet. David killed Goliath, a giant over 13 feet tall. He and his mighty men wiped the rest of the giants off the face of the earth. Okay, now we're getting into the aliens a bit. Alien agenda. Hope you guys find this kind of interesting. I do. And um, anyway. I hope you do too. Alien agenda. Are aliens really fallen angels and their demon offspring? The Nephilim? disembodied spirits looking for a human host because they were once half human the book of Dan- daniel may have a clue remember nebuchadnezzar's dream of the giant statue with feet of iron and clay mixed check this out daniel 2 verses 40 through 43 we're about halfway through this article by the way so you guys kind of get an idea we'll probably be done around 45 minutes today and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron in so much in as much as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything and like iron that crushes, that, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron. That king, the, the kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with the ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay they will mingle with the seed of men but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay is daniel talking about the demonic trying once again to mix with humans 
Could he be talking about technology? We'll talk more about that possibility next week. Okay, so that's probably actually, he just talked about that on Tuesday. So I'll have to, I'll have to check that, that teaching out. I haven't looked at it yet. Hybridization of the human species is not science fiction. It is happening all over the world, but more on that in future Revelation reports. Again, that's that's what this brief is called, by the way, the Revelation reports. Uh, every Tuesday, Pastor Troy Brewer, again, a little plug for him. It's awesome. You should check it out. God detested and destroyed Satan's hybrid race with a flood. Then later, when the, when the, when the armies of Israel moved into the promised land, they were told to kill them all. Why? They were no longer human, part demon. Tainted DNA and blood. That's why bloodlines are a big deal in the Bible. That's why when COVID started and we started having hints at mandatory vaccines, a new kind of vaccine, the mRNA vaccine, which is gene therapy or whatever, mixing the, you know, altering the bloodline, a huge red light went off in my spirit like, whoa. And we, we did a nine reasons. I think, I think the video was called Nine Reasons to avoid the 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 uh the prick you know because we had to use language that wouldn't get us kicked off social media um, i forget exactly the title but it was something like that but the one of the main points was you don't just mess with the blood if anything no matter no matter what denomination you come from and if you're jewish and if you're muslim if you're an abrahamic faith one thing for sure is you got to honor the 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 holiness the 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 blood is not a common thing life is in the blood you don't just mess with the blood so the fact that like people were just so you know just not even aware and and didn't treat it like a sacred thing that was alarming to me you don't just start messing with the blood now, this is really interesting. So, cannot be indwelled with the Holy Spirit, cannot be redeemed. This is the mark of the beast. The, those who get the mark cannot be saved. And I'm not saying the vaccine was the mark, but it sure is the same spirit. It's on that path. If you got the vaccine, I'm not saying you can't be redeemed. But I, but I am suggesting, I mean, you know, I don't know that. I am suggesting that you should be awaken to the reality that the the beast you know again put your put your trust in jesus now so that you won't even be on the earth for the great tribulation when this system is rolled out so what happens rapture the church you think that that's not a panic moment for the world the world's gonna freak out what are they gonna say aliens mass abduction we're being invaded we need to we need to come together we need to fight. We need a, we need a strong leader. Antichrist arises, brings a peace treaty. Seven-year peace treaty. Let's deal with this. We have this is a problem we have to deal with now or the whole human race will be wiped out. That's the narrative. That's the story. This is my opinion, but I think it's I think it's pretty obvious. That's the narrative. Guys, we got, you know, the Arab nations, Russia, China, you know, everybody, the European nations, the West. Listen, guys, we got to put our differences aside. We, need, we, this is the only path to peace. A one-world government combine all our resources to fight this thing. Of course, he promises peace. There is no peace. It's all part of the deception. But people are terrified because they went to the grocery store and all those nice Christian grocery workers are gone. Uh, you know the the product the the supply chain crumbles. The economy is destroyed overnight. By the way, it's not like it was a slow thing. This isn't a frog in the water, insidious thing. This is a the church got raptured on like a Monday or whatever day it's going to be, and then Tuesday all hell breaks loose, chaos. I would imagine that very week this treaty is signed. I would imagine that very week. All eyes are on Israel. Jerusalem becomes the center of the world, and, and the you know the narrative is you know all your main mainstream media. They'll have a they'll have a quick consensus on what the narrative is, and it's probably going to be aliens, right? Aliens came the first wave. We don't know if they're going to come back. We don't know their intentions, but we got to band together now if we're going to survive this thing. A heavy push of fear. To where people just give up all their liberty and they bow to this new new world order. 
They come under underneath a the Antichrist system. But there'll be those that wake up <laughs> and that want and that and that want to trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. And it seems like they're martyred for their for their belief because they refuse to take the mark of the beast and they lose their head for it. But I want you to see when you take the mark of the beast, which I believe is a tainted DNA system. I believe it's a it's a you know probably a vaccine. It's you know just makes sense. It goes into the bloodstream. It's sold as a as a safety device. It's sold as something you have to have in order to protect other people. It's the same spirit as COVID. The same spirit as the vaccine mandates. You know you you you're dangerous if you don't take it. That was it, you're a, you're a public health concern. Because you're not you're not altering your DNA with our with our with our shot here, you can see it coming from a mile away. That's exactly what it'll feel like. You 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 can't buy or sell without it. You can't participate in economy. You can't participate in the economy without this thing. But the problem is that thing taints your DNA, and you become unredeemable. Don't mess with your blood. God made your blood. Don't mess with it. It's not yours. You don't own it. Leave it alone. When human, when human part of Nephilim died in the flood, the supernatural part of them did not die. They became disembodied spirits, demons looking for a host body. Okay, so that kind of explains why. Why did the flood not take them out? Okay, this explain this explains why Jesus is casting out so many demons. Demons hate being disembodied. Remember Legion even begged Je- Jesus just to send them into pigs, unclean animals. They, just, they, 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 they want to have a host body. And when he came to the other side of the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him, coming out of the tombs so fierce that no one could pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and behold, they, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank and into the sea and drown in the waters. Per, it, that's a prophetic picture of the flood of Noah, if you, if you caught that. Why are, we, why are we talking about Nephilim today? Because they are making a comeback in these last days as aliens. They just rebranded. Aliens are rebranded Nephilim. The frogs John talked about of, of, sound like little green men who have been abducting humans and performing sexual hybridization experience, experiments on people since the 1940s. Now, I love conspiracy stuff. I think it's really fun, like entertaining. You know, I don't know how helpful it is to live a good Christian life. So I'm not promoting, I'm not saying go and, you know, get lost in this stuff. But if you are interested in the alien abduction stories, it's kind of crazy how many there are. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, okay, this is a little overwhelming. And of course, the Pentagon just released three videos that are clearly UFOs, technology that doesn't exist on the earth. So there's a reason why even our government agencies are starting to release these things. Again, it started it started in entertainment, imagination, like Star Wars, Star Trek, that kind of stuff. You know, uh, what is it? The body snatchers, right? It, start, it started with it started with that kind of like imagine, okay, through film, through media, and then you have now that is being legitimized through institutions that are corrupt, by the way, corrupt institutions. That they're they're not claiming to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think you know the Pentagon is a Holy Spirit filled place. Corrupt. Now that they're they're a part of this deception, they're legitimizing what people already had sort of a grid for because of 40, 50 years of uh, of entertainment and imagination. Now they're legitimizing it with declassified videos. Okay, so where is this going? Where is this going? Well, again, when the rapture happens, how do you explain that event? If you know, just imagine if you, if you're CNN, how do you explain that event? You got people tuning in. I mean, this is chaos, people. You, you, the school bus driver didn't show up. You, the teachers aren't there. Uh, children are are missing. All like 
Billions of people are gone. In the twinkling of an eye. Just like that. There will be some who are awake, hanging out with a person, and then that person's gone. And they'll see him caught up in the air, super fast. Okay, so now, now you have a whole bunch of people saying, I saw it. I saw my friend just taken, like that. What, what is your explanation? Well, it's got to be aliens. What, what else are you going to say? You, a pandemic doesn't fit the bill for, for that. It doesn't fit the bill for that. It, it's got to be extraterrestrials. It's got to be, you know, again, the Nephilim are making a comeback. So the pale horse of the apocalypse, chloros, or sickly green, that word means. Satan always has a ripoff. He cannot create life. But may, by the way, if you're just joining us, we're reading Troy Brewer's article from last week. I found it to be interesting. I just wanted to read it with you. We're talking aliens today. Satan always has a ripoff. He cannot create light, but maybe he can conjure up these tiny little sickly green space bodies for demons to inhabit. Just a thought. Again, some of this is just is just airing out some ideas. Don't take don't take it too seriously. The rise of alien abductions began when they took prayer and the Bible out of schools. Just a just a happy coincidence. The first recorded alien abduction, 1961. You guys remember this is the this is the famous story. If again, if you're into this stuff, you you know about this. If you're not, you know it doesn't hurt to read it real quick. Barney and Betty Hill were driving on on a rural rural highway to their home in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. By all accounts, the Hills were an exemplary couple. He, a postman, she, a social worker, active in their community and in the civil rights movement, on an isolated road snaking through the White Mountains. The couple later recounted they saw a bright object that appeared to be following their car. They arrived home around 5 a.m., unable to account for two hours of the night, but feeling that something terrible had happened to them. They eventually remembered being abducted by aliens and going through sexual experimentation. And if you think they're the only story, I'm telling you, it's it's actually crazy how many of people. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are lying, okay? Obviously, they want attention, whatever. But even like Joseph Smith, when it comes to Mormonism, I don't think he's lying. I think he actually had an encounter. And I think it was a supernatural encounter. That, that really is the only explanation why his life was so passionate to be able to fall, to be able to conjure, to be able to accumulate that many followers. You know, Mormonism's huge. But again, Paul says, even if an angel preaches a different gospel, let him be accursed. And that and what, what Joseph received was a different gospel. It, 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 it didn't honor grace. And it smuggled back in after all that you can do. And that one, that one little bit is all you need to know. It was deception. Muhammad, he thought he met, he, he thought, he thought a demon manifested. See, I, I don't think these people were just were just deceivers. Now they might have been deceivers, which opened their heart to being a good candidate for a, a demon showing up and giving them, you know, deceiving them. So you know, they, they might have had a heart that was sort of already bent away from the truth. You know, you look at Muhammad's personal life and you see, yeah, I, he doesn't seem trustworthy. You know, how old he is marrying a nine-year-old, being with her, you know, just look up the details yourself. You're like, yeah, not not, not trustworthy. Not somebody that you'd, you'd, you'd think would be a, a carrier of truth. I know a Muslim watching this would want to kill me right now, but just look up your leader. Just look up at his life. He is a warlord. I mean, I, you can follow him if you want. It just He doesn't seem like a pure-hearted Joseph Smith. Look up his life. Look up his life. I mean, I, don't... It, I'm not bashing him. I mean, I am, but I'm, I'm saying his life bashes him. Over 40 wives. You can't control yourself, man. You're going to try to lead a pure faith system, and you can't have any self-control in the sexual arena, and you're that perverted, and then you want people to follow you. Watch the Mormon movie on, on – uh, sorry, I didn't mean to bash on Mormons. If you're a Mormon watching this, it just – this is – I guess we're just talking about deception, so it's it's relevant. But also, what happened with Joseph Smith, right? <laughs> he, I, I think he actually met an angelic being. The problem was it wasn't good. It was deception, mass deception to lead people astray off of the simple gospel of Jesus Christ, putting the emphasis back on man's work and robbing people of the of, of peace with God that you can only find when you're justified by faith. 
But look at, you know, watch the Mormon movie, and it's, you'll find it really interesting. I mean, there's many Mormon movies, but watch the one about Joseph Smith's life. You'll find it really interesting that they don't put on screen all of his wives. Why don't they put on screen over 40 wives? Well, probably because if you're watching over 40 wives, you'd see this guy as an absolute pervert. He's twisted at the heart. How could you ever trust somebody who had over 40 wives? Think about it. Especially these, and, 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 and it was so manipulative how he sold it, you know. Higher levels of heaven and stuff, more blessing for you. You know, this is this is the most godly thing you can do, Brother Joe, is give me your wife. Yeah, okay. But you, know, you can't put that on a screen in today's context. No one's going to follow. So you have to put them as a husband of one wife, which is what the movie does. Right, which is just deception. Just tell the truth about him. Just sh- just show show the actual facts of his life. Show the pa- show the angel showing up. Show all that, and also show how many wives he had. Show 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 the whole story, and then people can decide: Do I really want to follow this person? Was this a, was this a trustworthy person, or was this a person open to deception and some sort of demonic entity said, "You're open for it. I'll give it to you." Which, again, read about Muhammad when he received his first revelation. He thought he met a demon, because he did. The Allah of the Quran is not the pure God of the universe who is love. And you can, you know, you can, you can see it clearly, but this all, this, all, this all sheds light what was happening. You, know, you, don't have a, you can't start a religion as big as Islam just because you're trying to deceive people, like you as a human. That human was fully convinced they met God. They met a supernatural force that was, uh, and it it motivated their whole life in that direction. Same with Mormonism, it, it it motivated his whole life in that direction, and that that you know you can't get get a charismatic leader that's willing to die for for what he what he believes just because he's a, he's a, he's just telling a fantasy. No, he had a real experience. I don't I don't doubt that he had you know that experience. It's just not from God. <laughs> You got to understand what you got to under you got to have a worldview, a biblical worldview that helps you understand what did happen. So these alien abductions is similar. You know, you, 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 if you ever get just you know interested in this stuff, you can watch some of these people's testimonies. What happens? And it's really interesting. Today, two point five percent of the population claims to have been abducted. Think about that. I mean, obviously, a lot of that's just getting attention, but you know. A significant amount of that is having demonic encounters. There is no record of an alien kidnapping or appearing to be born, appearing to a born again believer. This is one of the most interesting, interesting things. I haven't verified any of this. I'm taking Pastor Troy's word for it, but he's a trustworthy guy. I don't think he'd publish it if it weren't true. That's my own take on it. But you can do your own due diligence. I'm just giving a disclaimer. I haven't personally verified that. Like the 2.5%, I don't know where he got that from. I trust him, though, so I'm sharing it with you. The There is no record of an alien kidnapping or appearing to a born-again believer. Again, whew. That is awesome. Think about the implications. They're demons, not aliens. Many who call on the name of Jesus have had these little gray men disappear upon hearing the name. Think about that. These things show up, these creatures show up, and someone calls out in the name of Jesus, and they they leave. Sounds like a demon. That's what that sounds like. People who have been visited by aliens and have gotten saved no longer have visitations. Think about that. When they weren't saved, had visitations. After being saved, they went away. All this lines up. Again, if you're a Bible person, there's a context for this. You have a grid for this. But if you're raised outside of the Bible in the Western world, this is all science fiction. And they've, they've, they've created a different way to look at these experiences by taking, by removing God's word from it. Oh, I just realized we're 45 minutes in. Okay, for the recording, an hour in for the, the stream. Now this again, I'm gonna not I'm gonna not highlight on this too much. I'm not. Um, I have a really good Catholic friend of mine, and I'm kind of asking him what he thinks about some of this stuff, and I want to learn more. Um, just for the record, I know born again spirit filled Catholics, but they would even say like my friend would say like I'm not I'm not you know. He he actually has really really interesting and good answers 
for why we see, you know, Francis behaving the way he does. And that, you know, obviously not all Catholics agree with Pope Francis. So there's some interesting stuff there. But uh, Pastor Troy shares, which, again, he's a trustworthy guy, that the Vatican owns an infrared telescope in the United States called Lucifer. And, I mean, that's just weird, you know. If that's true, Catholics, you got some explaining to do. What's going on with that? You know, it's like the largest infrared telescope on the Earth. And it's, it's an acronym, so it means something like large, infrared, you know, it, 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 the L means large, right? Every letter means something. But it just happened to spell Lucifer. They call it Lucy for short. Okay, so that's the end of this article. Let's see. Um, let's see if the next one's available. So that was Tuesday, May 3rd. So the yesterday was the was the next one, which they might not have made it an article yet. These are just the sermon notes. May 8th. Yeah. This is that one May 2nd that I was saying about. This is the Lucifer Alien Project. Anyway, we'll end it there. Um, to hit to hit some uh, of the of the main points, not crucial. If you're a Christian watching this, not super crucial that you know all this stuff. Really, just just it's you know your job right now is to be ready for the groom. So the bride, if you think about the posture of the bride, you know the bride knows the groom is coming back. The bride is not super concerned with like, you know, figuring out, you know, cleaning the house, you know, figuring out uh, stuff that's not relevant to her mission. Your mission right now is to eagerly expect his return and to keep your lamp filled with plenty of oil, to keep your heart pure, to keep your garments pure, right? That, that, that's the posture of the church right now. Um, now, I do think people have legitimate ministries to share this kind of stuff because, people, you know, if you imagine you're in unbelief right now, you're dead in sin, and you're watching the news, and the, you know, Pentagon is releasing alien footage, and they're open about it. It's no longer conspiracy, there, or, or, you know, it's not being framed up like crazy kooks and conspiracy theorists anymore. Now it's actually being framed up like, yeah, we know that they're there. And in the academic, you know, the world of academia, the intellectuals are all kind of starting to discuss this stuff now. Like, uh, you know, NASA just hired, I think it was 12 or 24 clergymen, you know, people of different faith systems to, to try to put, to try to, to try to put some language in some, in some context um, to infuse that, you know, uh, that side of things, which I, you know, we'll see where that goes, but I, I have personally have no trust at all for NASA, but that's, you know, that's me. Make up your own mind. We didn't land on the moon. I'll tell you that. That's a, that's a hilarious hoax that I, <laughs> anyway, but I would say, you know, if you're a Christian watching this, it's actually not that crucial that you know all this stuff, not super helpful for your mission on the earth, probably, unless your assignment again is to minister to those people who are looking for answers in this space. And then you provide the Bible context in an effort to lead them into the Bible solution, which is trusting in Christ for salvation and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And obviously not taking the mark of the beast and not falling for the deception that's going to cover the earth. So, I find it interesting. Yeah, I wanted to do a broadcast on it. One, because I'm testing other platforms, and I thought, hey, well, um, you know, maybe I'll just freak them out with a, a weird one right off the bat. <laughs> hey, D Live, welcome, welcome, D Live, to the conversation. Let's talk about aliens. That sounded like a good idea to me, at least. Um, but, but I do find it interesting. And so, again, maybe not super helpful for your Christian walk, but kind of interesting. Uh, but if you do start hearing people in the workplace, people in the community talk about aliens, you know, I do think there is a place for Christian ministry just to provide biblical context. It's not that, the, you know, the Bible addresses these things. The Bible is such a helpful, practical book. It's, it, it's not isolated to um, what people would think of when they think of, like, religious material. 
it's it's a wild book. It's filled with stuff that's like pretty intense. Extremely intense. I know for one, when I came into Christianity, I was really surprised in a good way and impressed that the Bible was so thorough and provided so many so much explanation for the world around me. And so there is a place for that. Knowing how to talk about these things, I believe can equip you to help people make sense of the world that they're experiencing, especially in the cold months, in the coming months. Because I do expect you're going to see an increase in discussion on major news networks, mainstream media platforms with aliens. Aliens are going to become more commonplace. You're going to hear presidents even start to talk about, like, what are we going to do to prepare for aliens? We know they're here now. What do they want? How do we, how do we make first contact? Contact. I think it's going to become more of a, a, a household conversation. It's going to become more commonplace and accepted. And you got to understand and be so clear what the Bible says about these beings. They're not friends. The question you always ask is, are you with King Jesus? And if you're not, I don't care how much power you're bringing. I don't care about your deceptive signs. I don't care about any of that stuff. If you're not with King Jesus, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in what you're selling. So just be be really firmed up on your commitment to King Jesus. Because there will come great deception in the last days. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. We'll uh, meet again tomorrow for um, daily bread in the morning. If you're not if you're not um, subscribed, let me pull this up real fast. If you're watching for the first time, especially D Live, welcome again. We have another channel called the House of Joy Church. You can go to thehouseofjoychurch.com and check out our live streams there. We have um, Facebook and YouTube live streams, and we meet Monday through Thursday every morning for daily bread. An encouraging word from the you know from the Word of God just to get your spirit man built up in the beginning of the day so that you can have an awesome day and walk in victory. You should always stay at rest. Your your life should be marked by peace and joy. You know the kingdom of God. It's righteousness. It's peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so our mission at the House of Joy is to bring people into the reality of joy in the Holy Spirit. It's for every per, every person on earth has the ability to receive Jesus Christ, to receive salvation, to be completely cleansed from all sin by his precious blood. And as you trust in Christ, what happens is your temple, your body, becomes purified by the blood of Jesus, and God himself, the Holy Spirit, is able to dwell on the inside of you. And when you receive the fullness of God, your life begins to be awesome. You begin to walk in the power of God, and you begin to inherit all the promises of God. And God has come to that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't come to give you a religion or a set of rules that takes away all the fun. It's actually the opposite. The regulations in God's word ensure that you have the most fun. They make sure that you stay on the path of life, abundant life. And, of course, the devil's come to steal, kill, and destroy and to make sure your life sucks. God's come to destroy the works of the devil. That's his will for your life, is that you would not perish, but that you would come to him and receive life. And so we do that every morning, Monday through Thursday, on the House of Joy uh, social media pages. So join us. You're welcome to join me tomorrow morning. We'll have a daily encouragement called Daily Bread. And if uh, you, and then of course at night, we're going to talk uh, talk some liberty. I don't know what we're talking about yet. Might pick up on the seven church ages I still have a little bit more research to do, but we might pick that series back up. So join us tomorrow night for Less Salt Liberty. And if I don't see you before then, remember Sunday we go live at Wintersmith Park with our worship service around 1030 a.m. So you can always join us for that. Love you very much. And in fact, let me go to this last slide. If you have questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, anything like that, just reach out to us at letstalklibertytoday.com. Have an awesome night in Jesus' name. We love you. Grace and peace. So I won't die.